All right, this is a quick video for vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. So let's assume we have a system that has liquid benzene in it, and it is at zero, so the temperature is at zero Kelvin. Now, zero Kelvin is the lowest temperature anything can be at. We humans have never seen it exist. So if you want to know, that is actually a negative 273 degrees Celsius. This is extremely cold. That's colder than liquid nitrogen, are dry ice. And we have never seen zero degrees Kelvin. So Kelvin is the uh, unit for the absolute temperature scale. So let's say we want to know the pressure inside. Well temperature actually represents average average kinetic kinetic energy energy of molecules. Molecules whoops kills or atoms or atoms so it represents the average kinetic energy. If it's at zero, that means nothing's moving. So let's say for some reason, let's say for some reason we had a molecule of benzene up here. If it's at zero degrees Kelvin, then it's not moving. And if it's not moving, it's just going to fall towards the Earth. Fall towards the Earth. And when it gets in here, this little molecule of benzene is actually going to start interacting with the other molecules of benzene in here, most likely van der Waals forces. So it will just fall down into there. So if there are no benzene atoms up here, that means there's no pressure because pressure, pressure is a relationship to basically in gas is just a relationship of molecules hitting the sides and bouncing off. So they apply some minute force, very minute force against a wall. So they apply some pressure against the wall. So one little atom you'll never feel. But if you feel gazillions or just billions of billions of billions of billions of 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 little molecules hitting the side of this container, those forces add up and they generate a pressure. So let's say we increase the temperature just a little bit. If we increase the temperature just a little bit, maybe one molecule can free itself. So now all the molecules are moving, but they're not moving fast enough to break themselves free of their of their attractive to each, attractive forces to each other. So one is able to break itself free from the attractive forces it feels by the other ones. So it breaks itself free, and it starts applying a pressure to the wall. So it starts hitting the wall and applying a force to the wall. And again, one molecule is not really that much. So let's say we increase the temperature, the temp, to say 30 degrees Celsius. And just to let you know, that is 303 Kelvin. So that's quite a bit of a jump. So if we increase the temperature and we just watch it, watch it increase, more molecules of benzene will just start popping out of here and just bouncing around. So now we just have more molecules of benzene just bouncing around, hitting the containers, increasing the pressure. So as more molecules bounce out, it increases the probability of more molecules going back into the liquid. So if they go back into the liquid, they go back into the liquid, They'll, they'll be attracted to the liquid again and may not want to bounce back out. So there comes a point for the number of molecules leaving, the same number of them are entering back in. So, entering back in. So when you have the same number of molecules leaving as you have molecules coming back in, you have what's called the saturated pressure. The saturated pressure. And it's actually related to, related to temperature. So the log of the saturated pressure is equal to a minus B, B, C plus T. Now usually the saturated pressure is read by millimeters of mercury, of mercury. Now you may be wanting to know what A, B, and C are. They are just random numbers. This is an empirical formula. They do experiments to see what fits this, this table. It's actually, or this equation, it's called Antoine's equation. So you have to look up what A, B, and C are, and they're different for every molecule. They might be somewhat similar, but overall they're different for each molecule. So for benzene, benzene, A is is 15, whoops, 15.9, and it has no units. B is 27, 88, and C is a negative 52.36. So if we plug 
this these this data into here into here and we pick some temperature we can find the saturated pressure or if we have this set at some temperature if we have this set at some temperature we can find the pressure in here so let's do that real quick so let's just plug that in so what we get is the saturated pressure is equal to I'm just gonna move I'm just gonna take everything to the power of E so we'll take everything to the power of E so now we get E to the power of 15.9 minus B 2788 all over a negative 52.36 plus the temperature in Kelvin so let's say let's say 303 303 Kelvin Kelvin so what is that equal to so we have E is 2.71 so I don't have an E function on this calculator so then we take 2.71 to the power of the power of 15.9.9 minus minus 2788 divided by divided by a negative 52.33 plus 100 103 Kelvin so we get we get 116 so that is equal to 116 116 millimeters of mercury millimeters of mercury and just to repeat myself these have no units I mean it's just an empirical equation so the units don't matter so I mean even though you're told units always matter and this equation they don't matter it only matters what temperature the units of temperature are and the units of the saturated pressure so if we have a cylinder that's that has just benzene in it and it has a liquid in it the pressure inside the pressure inside this is 116 millimeters of mercury so if you wanted to know how that's related to atmospheric pressure we just divide have to divide by 760 millimeters of mercury and that will give you the saturated pressure or about one seventh so that's one seventh of the atmospheric pressure